Thank you everyone for coming here today. I am Laura Guajardo, coordinator of history, social science, and civic engagement at Santa Clara County Office of Education. And we are doing a history, social science, judicial series. And today is episode three, Democracy and Jury Duty, It's Essential for Our Country. And our special guest presenter today is Judge Paul Collin. And I'm going to let him take it from here. Go ahead, Judge. Well, thank you, Laura, and thank you, everybody, with the Board of Education. I'm really delighted to be here. Uh, this slide just tells you that I'm the poster child for career change. I'd had a career in business before I went to law school in my mid-30s. I'm now in my mid-60s, and I'm uh, on the bench. I'm uh, in my eighth year as a judge. So um, that the, the, the details are not all that important, but um, I'm very happy and very lucky. I had a great career as an attorney with the district attorney's office and now I love being on the bench. And the topic for today is going to be why are juries essential for democracy in our country? Before we, let's stay on this slide for just a moment. My goal in making these slides was for educators to be able to take the slides and either use them or build from them with a variety of student levels, uh, perhaps grade levels, and uh, where they are in their civics and social studies and history classes. So uh, the questions that you'll see here are ones for people to use, I think, in another venue, particularly with students to try to engage them. And I think there are a variety of research projects that could spin off of this uh, that might be interesting to keep students engaged, which I realize is particularly difficult during these troubled times. So the key question is why are they essential? But let's start with what is a jury? Next, please. Uh, and a jury is pretty simple when we put it this way. It's a group of people that decide something by using a set of rules. Uh, in our legal system, it's the judge that explains the rules and makes sure they're followed. The jury is a group of people that decide something. Next, please. Uh, and uh, juries don't just exist in courtrooms. Uh, juries are used in a variety of other capacities, certainly in the art world, judging people's performances. And here's just a delightful example from Seattle. Seattle has a film festival, and one of their juries is a jury of seven students between eight and 12, and they select one of the awards. Uh, but we're going to talk about a courtroom. A courtroom jury is 12 people. And one of the first foods for thought, I think, that would be a pretty easy thing for children to get engaged in is who else is in a courtroom and what do you think their job is? The next slide gets you started on that. Apologies for clarity. That was the best slide I could get to show me a range of people. I think a little more digging might find a clearer one. And there are any number of ways that you could do sort of a map or a schematic and let the kids fill them in. So why are they essential for our country? Uh, all votes count on a jury. It's not just a majority vote. In other words, no voter, in this case, no juror, can be ignored or taken for granted. Why? Because in a criminal case, all 12 jurors must agree. It's not seven to five, it's not 11 to one, it's not majority rules the way it is in elections. All 12 must agree. And in a civil case or a private case, at least nine must agree. So there's no so-called throwaway votes on a jury. And that means that if you're on a jury, your vote will never be more important. And the jurors make sure that, the, for example, the police and the government do what they're supposed to, or that a big company, for example, meets its promises. More generally, a jury makes sure that the people involved in a disagreement get a fair answer regular people from the community making that decision. In other words, you're going to make sure that the person who says something bad happened can prove it. Uh, and so again, it's the most important vote a person has an opportunity to make that you can be sure will be counted and matter. And I think a question for any number of uh, grade levels could be where else is everyone's vote required and what do you think about that? So what are the kinds of things that a jury decides? Well, in a criminal case, uh, someone might say the man pointed a gun at me and the man says I wasn't there, it must be someone else. It's a criminal case, ultimately trying to decide if someone is guilty of a law and should be punished. Juries also decide private matters. In this case, a car accident. Who's at fault? 
and those other types of cases can go on in a very long list. Landlord-tenant disputes, when Apple computers suit Sam, some computer over what the look and feel of your iPhone should be like and somebody steals something. There's a whole range of cases that happen. The things that we hear about from TV and the movies are criminal cases, but both types of cases uh, can have a jury decide that matter. So in other words, all the people involved in a case have the right to explain their side to jurors who are fair and have those jurors decide if the people proved their case. How do they do that? We can move on. So, well, before we get there, again, another food for thought, uh, asking students or even each other, should people have the right to make the police or other persons prove their case to a jury? If someone says, you did something bad to me, pay up. Should you have a right to a jury to make sure that your rights are being preserved? And again, I think that any uh, various levels could handle this, but I think an advanced class, in my experience speaking with students, might be able to get into this in a way that might be a little bit more useful in a normal educational program. Nothing wrong with asking the little ones this question, but that's just a suggestion. How does a jury decide? They listen and watch what happens in the courtroom. The judge decides what is appropriate for the jury to hear. The jurors eventually talk privately as a group. The judge tells them what law applies and the jurors decide how it then applies to the specific case in front of them. It's essential that they not take sides until they've heard all the evidence and we drum that into jurors again and again. And again, in a criminal case, all must agree. The decision that a jury makes in a criminal or civil case is a verdict. In a criminal case, all must agree. In California, in a civil case, nine out of the 12 must agree. I think it's great to ask the kids, what do they want in a jury? Uh, what do they think uh, people should be on a jury? Should they be similar or different? And this also kind of springboards into the next set of slides. The essence of a jury juror is will they be fair to both sides in a case? When I'm helping the attorneys select a jury, I ask this question over and over and over again. And is there anything that would stop you, potential juror, from being fair to both sides in a case? We wanna know a few more things, but those are the big ones. We don't want people who were involved in what happened. We don't want people to be friends or family with the people who were involved in what happened so that those jurors can be fair to all sides. And I think a very natural question probably for students of all levels is why is that important? Uh, and why is it also important that jurors be fair and listen to each other? I suspect the topic of listening, now that you all have students who have been in their home with their family more times than they are used to, uh, the listening aspect of this might have some really interesting uh, aspects when you get to it. And then why shouldn't somebody making a decision be friends with the person accusing or defending? Again, that's so there isn't a conflict of interest, a term that I think is appropriate perhaps at high school levels and up, but just really so that you are not doing something to help your friend when you should be looking at the rules and being fair. I think kids would relate to the job of a referee or an umpire at a sporting event. Let's do a little history. Where did juries come from? I hope somebody recognizes the TARDIS in the upper right-hand corner from Doctor Who. Uh, and I always like to point out to educators, we use the phrase founding fathers all the time. Koki Roberts wrote a wonderful book called Founding Mothers, uh, Abigail Adams, Dolly Madison, and others. Um, and I think that's uh, an interesting insight to offer for all students, but particularly for female students. Rosie the Riveter is that last picture. The colonies were denied juries um, and wrote it into the Declaration of Independence that one of their grievances was the denial of a jury. And they repeated it in uh, the next slide, which is the Bill of Rights. And to make sure, well, in the Constitution, they actually uh, wrote it into the original Constitution and among other things, the Revolutionary War run, won that right. And then the writers of the Constitution duplicated it as shown in the next slide in the Bill of Rights. I did put in a lot of slides, so I did not include after this a little bit more of a history lesson. The right to a jury goes back to the Magna Carta in 1215 when the British uh, people of property, the lords and barons uh, basically created the Magna Carta 
when they were fighting over political power with the king and queen, the royalty. And so jurors go back to really the creation of English law. That's the main source of United States law. So a history lesson here for all of your history buffs who are out there uh, and they can do some research on it. Uh, I really suggest that people do real research, but I'm always impressed at how much stuff you can find just by doing Wikipedia and following up some of the links there. And if you haven't gotten to the Revolutionary War yet, then uh, some of your students uh, might be interested to get there. Next slide, please. And just the bottom line again, your vote will never be more important. So I know that when adults come to jury duty, the number one question is, how do I get offered a jury duty? I've Googled that myself and I've heard all the answers. It's really essential. Uh, but what I think is attractive uh, is that all voter jurors must agree, your vote will never be more important. You're gonna help resolve an important legal disagreement that cannot be resolved without your participation, or in this case, the participation of the parents of your students. The jury does have the final word, well, with exceptions. One of the things you learn in law school is there's an exception to every rule. Um, the juror's decision decides the facts. It's hard to undo that. Uh, not guilty would free a defendant. And guilty would allow a judge to punish the defendant and help restore the victim with perhaps some financial gain or some other, uh, uh, other things that are offered to the victims. And in a civil dispute over money or a contract, Hopefully the jury's verdict helps those parties resolve their dispute and move on. It could be painful. Someone might have to move out of a house or pay some money, but that's what the jury is trying to decide. Next, please. Thank you. So uh, I uh, didn't go off uh, too far on a tangent with this. I just, when you see the uh, proverbial um, icon or statue, it's uh, a woman, Lady Justice, with the scales showing the balance of justice and a sword which generally means a punishment, a swift punishment, uh, but uh, there could be a whole range of uh, research that could come from this, I think, that could be interested for perhaps some of your uh, more advanced students. Who can be on a jury? You gotta be 18 years old, a US citizen, live in this county and have sufficient English. Fine to be bilingual, but you have to have sufficient English to understand what's happening in court and communicate with your fellow jurors and you cannot be denied because of discriminatory reasons. Uh, gender, uh, sexual preferences, race, race ethnicity, religion, uh, et cetera. Disability, age, we've had jurors who are blind serve. We have had jurors who are deaf serve. You cannot be denied because of those rights, uh, those characteristics. And I'd be really interested to see how the children respond to that. I think generally the response is a positive one and it can be a surprise to people. They're gonna to wanna to know how a blind person could serve and how a deaf person can serve. And those individuals had either the person who assists them or some sort of assisted listening device. Um, it can be cumbersome to do in a courtroom, but if someone has made that request, we follow the Americans for Disability Act and we try our best to accommodate that individual. Next, please. Jurors, uh, People always want to know how do they get out of jury duty. Uh, you will not go bankrupt if you're on a jury. Most people uh, don't get paid for jury service. And if that's going to be an undue financial hardship, you can't be on two juries at once. There are a whole range of uh, legitimate legal hardships. I give out a form in my courtroom and I speak with people individually about what their hardship would be. So just know that there are a range of legitimate legal excuses uh, that every judge uh, has to deal with in every case. Thank you. And I, I'd be interested to know what the next generation thinks about jury service. Um, I have been on a jury um, before I was a judge uh, and it was interesting to actually be on a jury. I was a lawyer at the time and actually go behind closed doors. Jurors, when they decide their case, do it behind closed doors. No one else is in the room and what stay, happens in the jury room stays in the jury room except for the final decision. Next, please. You get a postcard, it sends you to our website, tons of information on our website. The next slide is just one picture of our website. All of those links go places. You find out if you have to come to court, you can do it digitally. You can make requests for hardships even before you come to court. Next, please. 
Now, I've been talking about what is sometimes called a petit, as in French for small versus grand, as in French for big. Uh, trial juries are petit juries. Uh, we just never use the word. We say trial juries. But there's something called a grand jury. We're always looking for individuals to be on the grand jury. Uh, there's one grand jury that handles the creation of criminal cases. There's another grand jury that does called the civil grand jury. And they are, in fact, a public watchdog and engage in investigations about mostly the use of public funds. You can find their reports on our website. They are as wide as were funds used properly on a project to is there going to be a problem with water erosion in Alviso Bay. It is just a remarkable range of subjects that our civil grand jury handles. Uh, and they serve for a year and we are always recruiting. Next, please. So that's it for my slideshow. Um, and uh, I promised it would take less than 10 minutes. I might have gone a minute or two over, uh, and I'm well, happy to take any questions, and if we have time, we can do a little bonus slide. That's a lot of fun. So, Laura, I will put the uh, gavel back in your hands and ask you to direct me as you see fit. Okay. Well, thank you so, so much. That was super informative, and I hope that folks that are here or get to watch in the future get to take some of this information back to their classroom. Um, does anyone have questions? Because I actually have a few, but I'm going to wait. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask Judge Colin about jury duty or being a juror at this time? Don't be shy. Uh, in case people are wondering, yes, those are my pets. And no, that is not posed. Uh, they get along very, very well. It's quite adorable. I have a few questions for you. Okay. One, um, and this is something that people ask, and so I don't know how to answer when, I, when I'm asked. You know, when you, um, you're at home and you get your, there's actually, when you get your, when do, when do people register or how does the court get people's names and send them those little cards for jury duty? How does that happen? Because you didn't- So there are, there are a number of public lists from which we get the names, um, the registry of motor vehicles, uh, the voter rolls, those are not the only lists. I confess I don't know what other lists are used. The, you, you are called in randomly, which is always a surprise to the one person out of every hundred who seems to get called every two or three years. Um, but you are indeed called randomly. You get the postcard six weeks approximately before the week that we want you to be available. And then the Friday before your week, you can then go online or call up a phone number and find out if your number is among the group to be called in and you face that procedure through the entire week. So maybe you're not called in Monday at nine. Maybe the message that you get is call back at 1030 and see if we need you this afternoon and so on. Jurors who get called in on Friday are always a little bit miffed because they thought they dodged the bullet by not being called in previously. And then most uh, trials fall into a, a one week to four week period of time. There are some trials that can be significantly longer, many months. You will not know that until you come to a courtroom and the judge is the first person to tell you that. When you enter my courtroom, I hand you a calendar showing you the days I expect to be in trial because we need to know if people can be available for that period. Once you're on a jury, you're there for the whole process. Some judges take one day off a week. Many take for the, for the jury. We do other judicial business mm -hmm. uh, on Fridays. I prefer to take Wednesdays off. That gives people two days away from their life, then they're back on Wednesday, two days away from their life, then they're back. Um, usually the attorneys and I are working on that trial, but we can do things without the jury being there. So the list is, is random um, and still a little mysterious, even to a judge. It is mysterious because I feel like I get summons more than every two years or my husband, he seems to get it like all, it, it's just weird. Um, so here's another question. Regarding Judges, by the way, get jury duty as well. I meant to hold, I, it's in my office. I meant to do what I do when I start jury selection in real life. I was going to hold up to you my most recent jury postcard, which yeah. is about a year old. So everybody gets called. So what is, um, is there a, now I know, everyone should go in and serve on the jury. It's your civic duty. 
people are dying for the right to vote and have a democracy in other countries, as we know. And our democracy here is in, in a weird state right now, right? So what happens or, or is there anything that happens if you don't go? Because you should go. You absolutely you could, go. Yes, you, you, uh, if you don't go, you'll get a letter from the court uh, bringing you, in most cases, uh, sometimes we can make a phone call, but that's pretty rare. Usually that means the person has called us or the jury commissioner's office. We have a, a person called the jury commissioner. But if we don't know, then we're going to send a piece of mail directing that person to come to court. And that person could be subject to what is called contempt of court, which can lead to several days in jail or a thousand dollar fine or anything in between. Um, I have never actually given that punishment, but I've had several hearings where someone's had to come to court and tell me what happened. Mm. Um, and they had some, some reason that I either accepted, you know, something bad happened and, or I said, well, you're, you're, then you're going to go back in the pool, expect a postcard. We'll see you in six weeks. Mm. Okay. So, but yeah, That's it's good. against, it's against the law to not, to not follow it. So Right. You know, it's kind of like a traffic ticket. Something bad can happen. Um, my other question, does anyone else have a question? Because I have another question. No? Come on, you guys. Um, my other question is going back to the slide. I'm going to go back real quick to the slide of the juries. And I think this was a hot topic just on the news this morning. I was hearing something about juries and jury duty and in light of COVID-19 and people, you know, we have social distancing and people needing to wear a mask. Um, and we don't know how long for the foreseeable future, but there are still cases that need to be tried, right? So there's some talk about would the jury be able to really make, I guess they were talking about looking at people's body language and their facial expressions when they're being questioned. Uh, how do you think, or do you think it's going to change? I mean, I know everything is unpredictable and we don't really know, but what would be your best guesstimate of what it might look like in the future when we have a trial by jury? So you're absolutely right. You've, you've, you've put your finger on exactly a burning issue of the day for us in court. We do currently have one trial that resumed. Uh, that trial is being held now in the one large courtroom that we had available, as opposed to a smaller courtroom. Mm -hmm. And um, there's plexiglass dividing um, people, lawyers, um, the witness, between the witness and the judge, there's plexiglass. Some witnesses have appeared on the screen with the agreement of counsel. The jurors are spread around the courtroom and have an entire another courtroom next door that they can use as a place to assemble so that they can spread out in that courtroom. Um, they each have a container for their notebooks and their personal items instead of just putting them down somewhere in a group area. Mm -hmm. And we are trying to figure out how do we do that again and again with additional trials. Yeah. There will be some agreement that some witnesses can appear by video. But when you just talked about wanting to see body language and hear the tone of voice, mm -hmm. the judge's version of that is stated in the United States Constitution where you have uh, a right to see, hear, and confront the witnesses against you. That's specific for the person being accused, the defendant. Mm -hmm. And so even before COVID, we had situations where um, the person who was um, accusing the defendant, perhaps, of a bad crime, a child in a sexual assault, couldn't even be in the same room due to the possible psychological damage or fear of that child. And we had to Come up the, the law had to come up with ways to allow the defendant to still see and hear that child, but based on enough evidence about the child's condition, not have the child in court. So rarely, we've already had some video conferencing. What often happens, and has happened numerous times in my court, is the child just sits in a way that they don't have to look at the person, but they're there and can be seen and heard from the jury. How are we going to do that going forward? we're trying to figure that out. And there may be some situations where we have to rely on the technology to give us as much as we can, kind of like what we're doing now. So if you have a person like me who's emotive and willing to make sure my hands are in the screen area and 
use the technology with some mindfulness, it's not a problem. But I'm not a witness in a criminal case or in an emotional civil case. So we're going to have to see. When we've had to bring witnesses in for the one trial we're having right now, that judge has laid out butcher paper on the witness table so that that paper gets rolled up and discarded like a disposable tablecloth so that if that witness has been touching things, it's easier to take care of that. And it shows everybody else involved that that's cleanly, a cleaner. And she's had, Judge Zecker has had the witness uh, before and after wipe down the microphone and the handles of the chair. And then the next person comes up, even though the last person did it and does it again, so that there's this process of cleanliness. Okay. The bottom line is courts take a long time to the average person and they're going to take longer. Wow. Yeah, you have a, uh, I mean, the whole nation, but in the court situation, it's, you have a, a long road ahead of you, just like we do in education, trying to figure out our future and how we're going to move forward, right? To so keep everybody safe and do what we need to do. Exactly. Some of the most important things that happen in a school setting are those group events. And we don't know how we're going to handle those group events right now. And I don't just mean sports, which has their own remarkable value in and of themselves, but the kinds of things that you bring the kids together for, for every morning, for example. So I think we're all in it together. We definitely are all in it together. And that is a great way. I'm going to go back to the end. Um, if no one has any other comments, we're almost out of time here. So I wanted to put up our contact information. If you had any other questions or thoughts or other webinars that you would like to see, you can contact my me or if you have questions or you want to learn more about Judge Collins Cats, <laughs> you can email him. Um, and then I had put in the slide for our next webinar, but I don't think it went live yet. So um, Jenna is online. Jenna, would you mind sharing just a real quick tidbit about our next webinar. So next week on Monday, we have a guest teacher. I, the name is escaping me right now, but she's going to be talking about creating a Bitmoji classroom. So that's, I've seen a lot of that on Twitter and I'm actually excited to join myself and learn. So mm. if you want to join us, same time, one o'clock on Monday, and you'll just register and we'll start promoting it real soon, so. Fantastic, thank you so much for sharing, Jenna, and I hope you guys check that out. I've seen those backgrounds, those virtual backgrounds, and they're pretty, they're pretty cool looking. Um, again, thank you so much, Brittany, for helping us coordinate, and um, Judge Colin for being here today and participating. We'll be sending out a thank you with the recordings and um, stay cool. It's hot out there. And I hope you got the resources. Uh, I had sent some resources, uh, crossword puzzles, uh, some statement from the Chief Justice uh, and other things that were uh, attached. And if you didn't get them, I can resend them. And I do want to give out a personal shout out to Brittany, whose assistance in putting this together was really great. So, And thank you for having me. Absolutely. Yes. If you could resend them and I will send those out with the um, recording and the slide deck as well. Will do. Right on. Okay. Well, thank you very much, everyone. And you all have a lovely day and we'll see you next time. Thank you.